Hello. I'm sorry that suddenly I had many things to do. Uh, apparently. <sighs> you alright? Just cold. So cold. I realize it's actually like almost 50 degrees here, but. Ooh. Ooh. The problem, the problem with these temperatures is that there's more moisture in the air, so it gets damp. So even though it's like 48 degrees, it's fucking freezing. Like, it's a, it's a different kind of cold. Like, when it's really, really cold, it's dry, so it's cold, but it's not damp. Then it gets to be yeah. this temperature, and it's damp, and it's cold. Wet cold is the worst cold. Like steeps India. Yeah, that's that's yeah. That's the problem. Doesn't help doesn't help that it's cold in my office too. Well, you are in a basement. I know. Heat rises. Where I just turned my air conditioner off. To be clear. That's an electric blanket underneath my quilt. Oh. Just so you don't think like I'm I'm cold because I'm covering up. I'm actually rubbing my face against the electric blanket which has been on for like the last twenty minutes. I'm sitting here in a tank top. Well, at least it's nice where you live. Like it's freezing here. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying this weather, but, like, I need I need the heated blanket more now than I ever did when it was, like, 10 degrees. Mm. Also, because when it's this cold, the heat cycles on and off less frequently because the house takes longer to cool off. Like, the house is 70-some degrees or whatever, but because it's warmer outside, it, it cycles slower, so I don't get heat as often. I'm sure there's a better way to stay warm, but I don't know what it is. Other than, like, a heating pad to the chest, I can't think of anything. I considered that, but the dog has my heating pad. Oh. He's colder than I am. And this is, Poor puppy. I think, what, what do I have this thing set on? Five? Uh, ten? It looks like you're playing the weirdest game of peekaboo with something I can't see. I'm sorry. Is soup. You would rather not do this. That's fine. No, it's just cold. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. The heat is actually running. I can hear the furnace in the background, but like, it's so fucking cold down here. Like, my basement is nice and well sealed and everything, but like, it's damp. It also doesn't help that I've been hiding under these blankets for like the last half an hour or however long you were gone, so, you know. That's why it took me like two or three minutes just to get on the call, because I was like, I suppose I should stick my arm out and grab my glasses and shit. I'm like, so warm, don't want to leave Cocoon. Yeah, sorry, when you take 
interacting with Reeve is a lot of chit chat. Mm. So. I guess technically I could just put that up there, pull my arm in like that. <laughs> there we go. That's better. At least now my arms are covered. Or, you know, God forbid I could just toss a sweatshirt on. But that, rem that means I have to get up and out from under my blankets. So fuck that. Well, I'll be over here in California with my tank top and iced tea. Mm. Iced tea. Peter, I'm holding iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kiki. Mm? Diarrhea. <laughs> Let me put my phone on vibrate before I forget. Hopefully mine doesn't go off, but there shouldn't be any reason for it to. Unless Raid gets really drunk and tells me more stories about his new not-girlfriend. Oh, yay. Geeky, they're not dating, but they've hung out the last six out of seven nights. Uh-huh. The only night they didn't was the night he hung out with me, and that's only because he felt bad. She was still asking him for her anyway. Anywho. Hello and welcome to episode 62 of the Super Happy Fun Jabatron Tea Party Podcast with Kiki and Bones. They say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, but it's not one half so bad as a lot of ignorance. So hi Bones. Hi Kiki. What the fuck were we gonna talk about today? How cold I am. We did that already. You're freezing, and I'm not. You shut the hell Although up. Although you talking about being cold has made me slightly cold. So I'm gonna... Now Kiki has to put on a sweater. <laughs> there. Oh, this is the light. Oh, it's so warm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, God, yeah. It's just... The eyes up part of his head just poking out from behind the blankets. Oh, this is so warm. <laughs> oh, God, this is so warm. <laughs> I am a cocoon of blankets! Are you going to, uh become a chrysalis and then turn into a butterfly? More like a deep lord, but close enough. <laughs> I am warming up. Eventually mm -hmm. I will be able to get out from behind this, but right now it's basically talk, hide, talk, hide, talk, hide. Well, many parts of America are having weird weather and whatnot. Okay, let's close Tumblr before it becomes too distracting. Okay, we were going to talk about Shinobio. Oh my god, we that show that. is so good. I don't, I'm still not sure I'm saying that right, but whatever. <laughs> they, like, they explain how to say it, I still can't say it right. Yeah. Um, but the adolescence syndrome thingy. You remember when you were in eighth grade, you called yourself the Dark Wandering God? Yeah, it is a name for that. It's called being a dweeb. I am Dark Flame Master. <laughs> I am the Key Master. Are you the Gatekeeper? Oh. The uh, we fucking enjoyed the hell out of that. That's like super, super glad that he bought that. I cannot wait. Even though you can see it on Crunchyroll, it's a really good dub. The dub is amazing. I can't wait for season two. It's warm enough to do that whole barbecue thing. Okay, I have too many bottles of pills. It should not be this hard to figure out what which one I'm looking for. 
You're looking for the little white ones that make you forget about all the pain? Okay, I have two different little white ones now. That's not exactly helpful. Oh, no. Because I have tramadol and diazepam. Well, see, tramadol stops the pain. Diazepam just makes you not care. Sometimes. Most of the times I've taken it, it's not done jack all. Well, I mean, it's anti-anxiety medication, basically. Yeah. Actually, the best, wow. the best, the best chemical cocktail I ever was, I was ever on was the diazepam. I don't remember what the hell the muscle relaxer is called, and then fucking opiate painkillers. And I was just like, I don't give a shit about anything. I will be over here watching Team America: World Police, high off my ass, and laughing. So hard. So very, very hard. <laughs> I don't even remember what the, the nun... It's a nun... Uh, something, something, non... Non-something muscle relaxer. It's like, oh boy, this stuff is good. Sorry? I think Kiki's tired. Well, I didn't sleep well last night. Welcome to the club! <laughs> Yeah, if you follow me on Twitter, then you know that I was complaining about it. Because I took a lot of stuff, and to no avail. But I eventually got sleep, but no. It, let's talk about exciting anime, not how shitty our sleep and bodies are. You of us sleep because we have shit. Um, yeah, anyway, Shinobio or Shinobio Chew people. The show can basically be summed up as <clears throat> kid who has no good reason to be that way, um, trying to put it behind, actually a whole bunch of them trying, a whole bunch of high school freshmen trying to put behind them their I'm a crazy 8th grader syndrome. And cute cute crazy girl who lives above him in the apartment complex who's doing the same thing but for different reasons valid reasons mm -hmm. and how he like basically how their relationship develops how their friendships build and how how he finds out that it's actually okay to be a Chinobio sometimes yeah just you mean moderation mm -hmm. Because everybody keeps complaining that she's living in a fantasy world, but she knows it's fantasy. It's easier than reality. It, it, yeah, it's not like she's not aware of reality. She doesn't want to be in reality. Reality it's painful. And, yeah. Dark on it says... So trying to work through it. Um, but yeah, uh, good animation, good mix of um, styles and characters and told a very heart-wrenching story at the same time. And then there's going to be more of it, so yay! Huzzah. Apparently season you two is basically home. about her, Rika, living with him. Because their sister's in, like, Italy or whatever. Yeah, she's a chef. She's a really good chef, apparently. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just... I'm interested to see season two. It was kind of like, I kind of felt, it, it kind of follows the same uh, general storyline as I don't have very many friends. Not for the same yeah, oh, reasons, but... I know it's coming from a different culture, but adolescence is semi-universal, at least in modernized... Let's put it this way. Did air quotes the, their society. The Western experience of adolescence is very similar for all cultures. Yeah, with with some exceptions. Yeah. Obviously, non-modernized cultures or heavily war-torn cultures probably have very different adolescents. Which, but, which is why I said Western. Yeah. Um, so, a lot of those sort of animes do well over here because even as an adult, you could still identify with the issues because you likely went through something... While not exactly the same, similar, because adolescence is a weird time. You're an adult, but you're not. 
Let me, let me You're still a child. I'll put it to you this way. I literally went through the same thing that he was going through. I wanted so badly to be special, to be unique, to be powerful. There's this entire there's this entire section of my life where I wanted to believe I was some sort of awesome special forces Rambo soldier. Don't even ask me what got into my head, but it had to do mostly with feeling powerless. Kind of like what he went through. Like, you know, his mm-hmm. family, he's got a loving family, and, like, his, you know, his family life is really good. His school life isn't bad. But he wants to be special. He wants to be unique. He wants to have... Well, unique. they do hint at the fact that his dad went somewhere. Jakarta. Yeah. He's in uh, Indonesia. Yeah, I forgot that part. But yeah, so he's kind of the man of the house sort of deal, which happens to a lot of boys. Mm -hmm. Because of, you know, societal pressures, whether or not his family in any way meant it that way. Because they are, in fact, a very well-represented good family, not like blatantly fictional Mm kind of good, more of a realistic kind of good. And they don't have that crazy thing where he's living by himself. Which is so common in anime, so they don't have to explain parents. Like, his parents... Like, at the sounds of it, his parents are both involved in his life as far as they can physically, emotionally, and temporally be. Not to mention that his sisters, while finding him a massive dork, are also, like, involved. Yeah. So, it's also a nice... You know, the family actually exists where sometimes you don't really see, or often it's almost as if they don't actually have parents, even though they're spoken of. Which was amazing in um, uh, uh, Kaon at the end when when the Hirasawa, Mr. and Mrs. Hirasawa actually, like, up here. Mm-hmm. They only really show up, I think, at the end of the TV show and in the movie, but... Like, the fact that they yeah. actually exist is amazing. And that they're, like, normal people. Or, God forbid, that, like, the parents in Lucky Star all exist and are parts of their children's lives. Mm-hmm. We see them because it, it's the show showing the interaction between them. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's not just like Konata's father and her. I mean, the, the the twins' parents are around and active. And their other siblings. Miyuki's Miyuki's mom. Family. You don't see her. You don't see her dad, but he's around somewhere. She like oh, I don't even remember her referencing him because she mostly talks about her mom. Yeah. But that's that's who she's around most. I can only assume that dad's doing. Work, I believe maybe? I believe Dad is like a CEO or something, so he's never home. That's like the story of why they're so rich. Like her mm-hmm. father's like a high level executive with a Japanese company, so he's just never home. And her mother—that's a show. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say her mother basically can just doesn't have to work because her father makes a shit ton of money. Um, but yeah, it's a. Lots of anime show, like, the cliche, poor, middle, and rich, or whatever, but, um, this went into more depths of, with actual, like, common interactions and whatnot. It wasn't anything really super groundbreaking, but yeah, it was just, a nice change of pace. It was just regular, like, your parents and yeah. you interacting at the dinner table. Yeah. Which, in many Western shows, is... You really usually only get interactions with parents if, like, the shit has hit the fan or there's an argument going on. Yeah. Because that's apparently all we care about seeing. We don't see, we don't see a lot of, we don't see a lot of, like, the Adams Family parents. No. We are getting a bit better at that. Um, Steven Universe is a yeah. different kind of family. And his dad, even though he's working a lot and whatnot, is still very present in his life. And we see their regular interactions. Well, and like, and um, just how much his mother loved him. Holy shit. Yeah. We learned that through his dad and the other uh, yeah. gem people. 
and they are like pseudo the rest of his family. It's nice to see their interactions because they're both teaching and learning with him. Because mm-hmm. they don't know what it's like to be human, and he's partially human, so yeah. it's a bit different for him. And we also learn about their families because it's different there mm-hmm. for them because your parent kind of dies to make you so. Let's just hold like your energy being so some of you yeah. is your your predecessor for lack of a word like mm-hmm. they don't have families in like the biological sense like yeah they are they are they're basically like time lords is the best way I could describe it like yeah. they regenerate. Well, Time Lords still have biological offsprings, but yeah. Yeah. Um, like, but they all still come from different kinds of backgrounds there is, because, like, the, 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 the tall one. Garnet, is that her? Yeah, name? the big one. Yeah, they recently had an episode about her progenitors, and their, their strong love for each other made her, that's why she's got multiple gems, unlike the other people. Mm-hmm. And also why she has three eyes, because of the past scene or future scene or mm-hmm. whatever. I'm behind on watching stuff, so I'm don't, mildly don't feel bad. paraphrasing. Uh, everyone, uh, but, uh, I say everyone shits on me because I haven't watched any part of Gravity Falls. Like I, I know it's a good show, I do. I, I, I'll i watch it eventually, it's just... I'm not, like, in a hurry. It'll be there. Yeah. It's a, I'm... I gotta catch up on Gravity Falls and Adventure Time, and some of these shows I'm not I'm not catching up because I'm waiting to watch them with the hubby because he wants to get into them, and a good way for me to get him into a show is to watch it with him. But but we're so behind on other shit that it it has to wait because he got super busy, and then if I'm not feeling well, I really don't want to watch something so. Well, it's like I got a ton of new anime, and I haven't watched any of it because, like, I'm working 40 to 45 hours a week and then, like, doing social mm-hmm. shit with my family in the evenings. And, like, I get home and I talk to Kiki for, like, an hour, and then I'm like, I have to go to bed. I have to sleep. Yeah. You've been going to bed a lot earlier than you, than you used to lately, which I understand because you get up a lot earlier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting up at, like, 4.30 to go to work, and I'm just like, uh. And you're not at a desk job anymore, so yeah. you're far more active these days. Yeah, anywhere from ten to 15,000 steps a day, which is anywhere from five to eight miles of walking. That doesn't include all the lifting and just general activity. Oh, my God. And if I could actually get back to sleep after I wake up, because like it's all biological, so like tomorrow I'll wake up at whatever, 4.30, if I can get back to sleep, I'd be fine, but that's the whole problem. Like, I wake up, and I'm just, ding, I'm awake. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, I want to go back to sleep. Yeah. So, in general, life gets in the way of doing shit, because I have the ways I watch things, and you have the way you watch things. So, Chinobio is not that new of an anime, but we finally got fucking around to watching it, because we found time. Um, and you bought it, yeah. so all the more reason to break down and watch it. Well, it's one of those things where basically, if there's a dub, that's the only way I'm actually going to watch it anymore. I hate to admit mm-hmm. that, but other than, like, yeah. Sailor Moon, I'm not, I'm just, I just don't care enough to watch stuff in Japanese. Well, yeah. well even on my own time, I'm watching a lot of less newer stuff, because I'm I'm trying to be more productive, and I don't want to I find it easier to pay attention to something when I'm not having to do 50 million other things, so... I tend to only either listen to new stuff or watch stuff I don't have to pay a lot of attention to when I'm working. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, weird how our tastes change depending on, like, what's going on in our lives. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm making more money, so I'm buying more stuff, but I'm not watching, like, nearly as fast. Like... Every year, my the speed at which I go through stuff is slowing down more and more to the point where, like, I'm actually just not buying. Like, I bought a whole bunch of stuff when I got the new job because I was getting more money, but now it's like I'm just not in a hurry to buy stuff unless it's, like, a good deal because I know I'm not going to get to it. Like, I have stuff from multiple Christmases ago that I bought, like, on Black Friday sales that I still have not watched. They're still in shrink wrap. Because I just 
don't get the stuff. And, and it's weird, because, like, I don't even, like... Like, what ends up happening a lot of times is I just, like, I come home and I, like, flip on something from YouTube and then just, like, curl up under my blankets, and that's... That's it. Like, there's no... Mm -hmm. And Ray and I were talking about stuff like that, and it's like... It's like the the need to use the little bit of time you have to be social with other human beings means that basically you get very little like I'm gonna like watch something entertainment time because we're both doing that whole thing you know, where we're working jobs with long hours and and then choosing to be social with other people when we get done because you know God knows we don't know when the next time that's gonna happen will be if we get that shot so it's like. You know, like, yesterday, I had the day off, I could have watched stuff, I ended up just, like, cleaning and doing chores and whatnot, and then Raid came over and we hung out. We actually watched something, but, like, that that was the only way it was going to happen, because otherwise I was literally just going to keep, just going to just go back to curling up under my blankets, because it's a day off. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Well, I only go to physical therapy once a week now, so maybe I'll find more time to do stuff. Oh, boy. Even though I still have to make sure that I exercise every day. You must <laughs> exercise every day. Well, at least do the stretches. You must stretch every day. Mm-hmm. Which, in doing those, I feel taller. Because my posture is so different now. Yeah, because you're stretching your spine out. Mm -hmm. Yes, we like an that anime. So <laughs> what else were we going to talk about? I have no idea. That anime was great. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm still enjoying Crystal, but I didn't foresee me not enjoying it. So. Well, Crystal's weird in the sense that we're both, like, in indoctrinated into the culture, so it's like... Yeah, I'm already a big loony, and I know a lot of what's going to happen. It's just nice to see it in a new way. Mm-hmm. Well, and because you and I have discussed it so much, I generally have an idea of what's coming. It's just a matter of watching it go down. Mm -hmm. Like, less so than you, because you've actually been through it multiple times, whereas, like... But I've, I've watched the show, so I know, like, generally yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah, with these episodes, I'm like, okay, say bye to Mars, say bye to Mercury, say bye to Jupiter. Get ready to say bye to Venus. Because mm -hmm. uh, their ass is going to be kidnapped for most of it. Although, I don't know if they're going to change that slightly. I mean, there's been little itty bitty changes here and there, which make me like it a bit more. Mm hmm. Well, it sounds like they're going to renew it for um, S and Super, so. Yeah. I guess the storylines that those would include for the next year, so we'll see. Yeah, we did. It's gonna start showing on actual television in Japan, that is. But so that might help the budget a bit. It it sounds like it's supposed to. I mean, I don't know, but that I assume once they got on TV, that that would help them get a bigger budget. I mean, I don't actually work in the industry, so I'm just making assumptions. <laughs> Only know what you're told, so... I imagine that's more revenue, at least. I mean, somebody add times and station deals. I don't know how different the Japanese media contracts might be from American, so... Um... I totally made a list the other day, and I can't remember much of it. That's why I should have just actually written it down and put it on the wall. That would be too easy. Because, mm -hmm. like, I got other notes on the wall, like video editing notes and shit, but I couldn't bother to write that down, apparently. Even though I could have made notes on my computer, but whatever. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I haven't really seen any new movies or anything. Um, any ideas, Cupcake? I got nothing. 
You're a helpful, helpful bud. <laughs> Falling off. There we go. Mm, we could go to the classics, like sex, sex, the word sexism and society and portrayal of media. Because I'm sure there's something new in the community about how that sucks. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I supposed to respond to something? I just zoned out there for a minute. <laughs> Well, those are some creepy Five Nights at Freddy Markiplier picks. Oh yeah, he did whatever super aggressive nightmare mode, so... No, I meant fan art. Oh. Yeah, I know he did super aggressive mode. I mean, I've seen worse, but that's just what happened to come across in the dash. Hmm... Give people enough time and they'll draw porn or anything. Um. Well, I didn't really do a lot this week. Neither did I. Neither did I. <laughs> I mean, other than work, but, you know. Happens every week. That's a given. I keep meaning to buy Majora's Mask on the 3DS, but I just can't. You still haven't? Well, I don't have any time. There's no... I'm not going to buy a game I'm not going to have time to play. That's true. And it's not like it's going to go anywhere. I can just get a copy any time. Uh, it's been out for a month. It's not like it's hard to find a copy. I just, like, I'm like, I'll buy a copy, but I just don't know when I'm going to play it. <laughs> well, you think of something, or don't. Cause I'll be right back cause I had too much tea. Huzzah! Yeah. Think of anything interesting in the few moments I was gone? Nope! <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, Kiki, what are we going to talk about? I don't know. Let me go for back enough in my history to see what the fuck our conversation was. Didn't I ask you this, like, last night or this morning? Like, what are we going to talk about? I feel like I did. Yeah. You gave me a list, and I was like, that's super... I know that we were going to talk about Shinobio and Crystal, which we've done. It's not much to say, yeah. honestly. It's, it's good. It's good. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Talking about Breeze and how she's sick. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Universal Constant. Blub, 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 blub. You yelling at me about anime. Oh, why don't we talk about how fucking pricey that one thing's going to be. Oh, yeah, that show that I, like, randomly came across. I'm like, Geeky, what is this all about? And you're like, oh, my God. Because, um, even though I haven't finished it, what the fuck is the name of that anime? I think I recommended it on here before, but I haven't gotten around to um, catching up on it, and I still think it's pretty good, but there's... They're selling it for, what, a hundred and seventy something? Yeah, mm-hmm. And Right Stuff will do it for one thirty, but the, like, regular uh, price is, like, one sixty something. Oh, uh, it's play the, what the fuck was that? <gasps> oh, cool, it's game. Oh, pardon. Um, cause I'm bad at remembering names. Do, 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 do. That's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. That's not it. It's the one about the people who live under the water. Seriously, where the hell is it? Ah! A low in the sea. Or the tradition of the sea, something like that. I'm not going to try to say the Japanese name. No, don't play the episode. <laughs> it looks cool, whatever it is. Yeah, um... 
essentially, long ago, humans lived under the water, and then eventually they transitioned out, but some stayed. But there's very few who still live under the water, and so few that the school gets shut down, and they have to go to school above water, and it's very different cultures interacting, and a lot of taboos and shit like that. It's just a bunch of kids trying to live life through it. Mm-hmm. And it's beautiful and well-written, or at least up to what I've watched. It's going to cost an arm and a leg. Yes, pricey arm and a leg. I mean, it comes with stuff, but it still doesn't seem like it's worth that price. Well, I didn't notice this. Is it at least being dubbed? But that's what I was talking about. If it hadn't been dubbed, that would have been like, yeah, whatever. Oh, okay. That that's why I was interested because they're like it's getting a dub, but it's gonna be a hundred and some dollars, and I'm like, oh my god. Oh fuck. Oh, here's our list: Sailor Moon, Pricey Anime, Game Boob Physics, Jerry Pratchett, Animated Films, Shinobio, and whatever else happens to come to mind like normal. Surprise. <laughs> Why did I want to talk about Game Boob Physics? I mean, it usually sucks. There must have been an article or something I was looking at at the time. Stupid past meeting. You should have made notes. I tell myself that every week that we're going to record, and I'm just like, uh, whatever. Well, it's it seems like it's one of those silly things. Like, they can perfectly render how hair reacts to wind, but they still can't understand how boobs work. They're not that difficult. It's, it seems more like a social issue than an actual understanding physics issue. I think you're right on target. Yeah, it's like, well, this is how they would look, but that's not how I want them to look. They're expected to look like this. And I'm not talking just size and shape, but general movement. Like how I was super fit, pissed how uh, Jill suddenly had weird boob physics in the... The uh, remake of a remake? Yeah. Like, I will give you that boobs violence, but not the fuck like that. Especially if she's supposed to be wearing, you know, like, her uniform, which has body armor under it. Her boobs shouldn't be doing much of anything. Well, honestly, you know, you assume she's wearing some sort of sports bra if she's, like, gonna be yeah. out fighting zombies. But I mean, I even know. even though they weren't, you know, expecting zombies, they're still wearing their shield uniforms, which I would imagine have some sort of protective stuff to it, which means that it would severely limit, even if she was just wearing, like, a, a good sports bra or whatever, would limit or the movement of her breasts, like... And I believe she's wearing... It wouldn't... Go ahead. And I, say, and I believe she's wearing body armor, so that pretty much... Yeah. Wipes out any chance of seeing any jiggling, because... Because, yeah, you wouldn't want your body armor to move like that. That's a lot of chafing and shit. Like, it should breathe a little, sure, but not not like that in one position. Like how you see boobs somehow jiggle when they're in, like, full metal armors. Like, how am I seeing that? Oh, that doesn't God. make sense. I remember sending that <laughs> gif of the one girl yeah. from... I think it was fairy tale with her boobs jiggling through those through plate mail, and I'm just like, okay, what? you could explain and, and that. Must, one. Yeah, no. Like if the plate mail was just a little strip across her breast that was held on by leather, and that was moving with the boobs, that'd be one thing. But that was like a full breast plate, and it was somehow jiggling and whatnot. But only yeah, only the section does. right through right through her chest yeah. area. Everything else was yeah. solid. That's that that's poor thinking. Um, but yeah, like I was gonna say, is it two or three that Jill's in? I, I always forget. What's up? The one where she's in uh, three, where she's by herself. Three. Yeah, okay. Then she, yeah. I would give you those kind of jiggle physics. Probably not that much still, because boobs don't do that. But 
a bit of the jiggle physics in that, because she's wearing an outfit to go to a date on. She's not wearing body armor and shit, and it's strapless. I will give you boob jiggling there. But only there. And probably still not to the extreme they would show it. But uh, we've complained many a times how people just don't seem to understand boobs. They're not these mystical fucking things. Boobs are the most mystical of all things. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's more of a social issue than a, you know, actual understanding of science issue. Because uh, women are things, apparently. Um... No, I, I, there must have been some article that was talking about boob physics. I probably reposted it somewhere, so I'll figure it out later. Um, and I'm just very sad that Terry Pratchett is dead, but also happy that he's free. Um, and yeah, the only thing else on the list was whatever we thought of <laughs> or animated films. As, uh... Other than... So, Hubby and I watched Big Hero 6, which is the movie that won the Oscar. Oh, God, I want, I want to see that, but I keep forgetting to watch it, or we'll buy it. It's not a bad film. I'm not I'm not here to say it's a bad film. It's just not Oscar-worthy. It should not have won. Disney has won Nor all but, like, one year in the year. Yeah. They, the year they lost, it was Spirited Away. Yeah. Well... Which was produced Tales by Disney in this yeah, country. Yeah, the Tales of... Princess Kaguya. Kaguya, Kaguya and uh, The Song of the Sea are, are films I didn't see. But I did see How to Train Your Dragon 2, which also was, was up for it, which, while I, again, I enjoyed it, was not Oscar-worthy. So I can only imagine the two other films were either total shite or the voters didn't see them, which uh, apparently is a common thing. Voters don't tend to actually see a lot of the shit that gets put up. No. And just vote. And just vote for whatever they happen to to have seen or been told about, or just not vote in that section at all. Mm -hmm. Which why the fuck do I care about the Oscars then? Now if something wins the BAFTA, then I'll I'll give a fuck because apparently those are supposed all right, to be so legitimate. This year we had the Box Trolls, How to Train Your Dragon Two. I forgot the Box Trolls. Song of the I Sea and the Tales yet. of Princess Kaguya. Yeah. And Song of the Sea is supposed to be beautiful. Which, um, it's from the same people who did The Secrets of Kells, yeah. which was also beautiful, so I imagine it's very much in Tales of Kaguya. God damn it, why am I having so tr much trouble saying That's that? That's a Ghibli film. Yeah, which, again, probably beautiful, probably a good story. Can't comment too much because I haven't seen it, but just what one and the things I had seen that had been nominated, I'm not saying they shouldn't get a nod, just... I don't feel like they deserve to win. The storing was very not again not terrible, but meh. Well, the the tale of Princess Kaguya is never gonna is was never gonna have a shot because it's it's based on the uh, Japanese folk tale, which is the tale of the bamboo cutter, which only yeah. people who are into Japanese culture or watch any amount of Japanese anime that references Japanese culture are going to have any idea what that's even about. Well, Song of the Sea is also based on folklore, so... Oh, is that? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Um, Celtic myth. Okay. Yeah. So, same deal. And, Just... Yeah. So, and, um... How to Train Your Dragon is based on a book series. So then last year we have Frozen, which went up against The Croods, who, honestly, who gives a shit? That, that like, did not... Right. Yeah. We have Despicable Me 2, which was... Uh, Meh. I liked it. I'm not, again, again, I'm not saying it's bad, just Meh. I don't think, I don't think it plays off as a... as a... like a truly unique movie by itself. It plays to a formula that sells tickets. American animation has started, or at least from a massive film perspective, there's still a lot of great indies out there, but I'm talking about the big names is hitting that that meh stride again. Yeah. Which 
Like, nothing's truly terrible, but nothing is also... Because it's going to be big yeah. business again. Yeah. They're realizing they can make money, so they're going back to yeah. non, you know... What, what's, what do they call it? It's... It's, uh... Uh... There's a, uh, there's a term for it. It's non, um... Not disruptive. Like, it, it it's... It's not, uh... It's bland. It's lack of a better word. Yeah. It's it's made to fit. It's like what they do with vi with big AAA video games. It it, it yeah. follows like a very wide uh, mainstream curve that they know will appeal to a lot of different people all at once. So they can sell you're a ton of tickets. The, yeah, you're just hitting off a bunch of checkpoints and not really, you know. I'm not looking for every film to break the fucking mold, but I'm also not looking to be told the exact same fucking story over and over again. So we have, all right, so we have The Cruise, just, this is last year's. The Cruise, Despicable yeah. Me 2, Ernest and, and, I can't even say that, Celestine, Celeste, whatever, The Wind Rises, and Frozen. Frozen takes it. Mm -hmm. Which... And The Wind Rises okay. is a fucking movie about the guy that, the guy that developed the Zero Fighter and his yeah. his having to deal with building a war machine, for lack of a yeah, better which, word. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the the French film is compelling, about. Yeah, far more compelling story than Frozen. Again, I enjoyed Frozen, but it, it was also kind of mad. 2012, we have Frank and Weenie, Paranorman, The Pirates, A Band of Misfits, Wreck It Ralph, and Brave. Brave takes it. Brave is the only one out of those that I still have not seen. I even own it. And I Brave is a good movie, yet. but... Her... Brave got ripped to shreds, kind of, from a storytelling standpoint. Like, because it was originally this, and they oh, were almost done, and then somebody said, no, it's got to be more like this. So they kind of had to go back and do shit. Yeah. Which, apparently, while it's a st still a great film, kind of pulled the main core of the story out of it. Well, it's still a good story, but the storyline yeah. changed. Yeah. Which meant some older trailers made no sense all of a sudden. <laughs> but, um, Paranorman, I fucking love that movie. Paranorman um, for having a, well, not, not explicit, openly gay character. Yeah. Uh, tells a, a story a lot of kids and adults can associate with. Uh, uses horror tropes to its advantage yeah. and not just because they exist. And I am a sucker for fucking stop motion, which gorgeous. Well, was, um, that was the whole deal with Pirates, a band of misfits. Like, yeah, another great film. Great movie. It, it was, you know, a little wee at times, but still very enjoyable and funny. All right. Funny as fuck. It's, it's more funny to people like me who are science majors. Because, like, the original pilot <laughs> title was, like, uh, I don't remember what the original title Oh, yeah. The Pirates Cause, in an Adventure with Scientists. Yeah, because isn't it based on a book as well? Yeah. Most things are these days. Yeah. But, but yeah, um, like, the Oscars had a lot of controversy lately about not only winners but nominations. Because it's just a who do you know and who bothered to see your fucking film kind of thing. All right. And so in 2011, we have A Cat in Paris, Chico and Rita, Kung Fu Panda 2, Puss in Boots, and Rango. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the year. That was the year that Disney didn't take it because Rango took it. I have not seen any of those movies. This is the end of part one. Light thinks it travels faster than anything, but it is wrong. No matter how fast light travels, it finds the darkness has always got there first, and is waiting for it. This is part two. The trouble with having an open mind, of course, is that people will insist on coming along and trying to put things in it. 
All right, Kung Fu Panda 2. Oh, well, okay, I've seen like 15 minutes of Rango, and then something came up, and I have not gone back yet. <laughs> Rango, all right. Rango. I know what they're about. No, but... no, no. Listen, listen. Rango okay. is the Three Amigos. Yeah. It's just that movie. And then there's another movie that came before it. It's the it's the pretenders. This the pretenders bringing the town together to defend itself against horrible bad guys. Kung Fu Panda. Well, yeah, that's a... how letting hatred letting hatred rule your life will forever dominate your destiny. Yeah, because it brings up a villain we've never heard. I haven't before. seen the other three. I have no idea. Sorry. Yeah. Um, in 2010, there are only three up. How to Train Your Dragon, The Illusionist, and Toy Story 3. I think we know who took it. Go to... Yeah, I went to Toy Story, right? I thought The Illusionist was a... Oh, I guess Illusionist was a animated film. I thought that was a live action. No, there's a live action film also called The Illusionist. Ah. And then there's the film... Um... I forget the studio's name, but they also did Triplets of Belle de and Oh, Belle. okay, yep. Yeah, that that quiet sort of style, uh -huh. which the illusionists, both the the live action and the cartoon, even though they have absolutely nothing to do with each other other than they happen to have the same name, both very good films. So then, but I have not seen uh, Toy Story three yet. Still, it's on my list of not seen, and I enjoyed How to Train the Dragon. Yeah, that's a good movie. Two thousand and nine, we have Coraline, Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Princess and the Frog. The Secret of the Kells and Up. All good movies. I have. I haven't finished watching the Fantastic Mr. Fox. It's another one where I had to get up for some reason. I haven't gone back to it. Uh, Coraline is not only my favorite, one of my favorite fucking books, but I loved the, mo the movie ap adaptation Wait of it. Wait a minute. Hmm. I'm just checking something. Okay. Mm. So Up took it that year. In 2008... Hmm? Uh, I feel like Up, though, was Oscar-worthy. Uh, Up like was Oscar-worthy, the because they wrote... Yeah, it, it, was, it was beautiful, compelling, very technical, it, and... It was a well piece of voice art. Acted. Yeah, it, it felt like it hit all the marks. In 2008, we have Bolt, Kung Fu Panda, and Wally. Bolt was very underwhelming as a film. Yes. I enjoyed Kung Fu Panda, and Wally was also fun, but it also hit like it. It at the same time felt Oscar baity. Yeah. Because it had the environmental message, but didn't really actually teach about environmental messages. It just kind of did the blatant "we fuck shit up, oh look, but we can still fix it." Supposedly. The the line you're looking for is. The world doesn't end when we destroy ourselves. Wow. We end. The world will still be here after we nuke ourselves into oblivion. And eventually it will recover. Its scars will heal. We won't. We cannot destroy the planet. We can only destroy ourselves. The planet yeah. will still be here. At this point in time, we do not yet... Uh, have we yet to obtain that kind of power. We cannot destroy a planet. We can only destroy ourselves. Yeah. So then in 2000 and, what, 7, we have Persopolis, Surf's Up, and Ratatouille. What one? Was it Ratatouille? Ratatouille. Okay, I, again, loved Ratatouille, but Persopolis was a far more compelling movie. But I suppose because it's foreign, it didn't win. Yeah. In 2006, we have Cars, Monster House, oh. and Happy Feet. I should state, though, why the fuck was Surf's Up even nodded for an Oscar? Just because they needed another movie? It's, that must have been a quiet year. It's the only thing I can figure. So Happy Feet took it that year. And Happy Feet, was that is that actually a Disney movie? No, it's Warner Brothers. So they haven't. So Disney hasn't steamrolled, but they have had. There, ha, I mean, there have been years where somebody else took it, but it, they, they usually win. So then, what? Or at least get nominated. I don't think they've ever 
been not nominated. In 2005, we have Corpse Bride, Howl's Moving Castle, and Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Wallace and Gromit won. Good. Um, because, uh, I love that film. <laughs> I love Wallace and Gromit, though. So. I mean, I I would have I would have I mean I like Howl's Moving Castle, but it's not. It doesn't scream unique. Like it's a good it's a good film, but it's not. It's a good story and a good way of telling it, but it's also a very well trodden story. Yeah, it's it's not. Unique. And that's not that's not its fault. That's just because it's a very common thing we tell. Yeah. And it was because it was using a older story, or the older the story it's based on was using an older set of stories. Because when you break stuff down to like just the bare parts, lots of shit sounds like a, lots of other shit. But at the same time, you know, it's it's how you tell it. All right. Then in two thousand and four, we had Shark's Tale, Shrek Two, and The Incredibles. I forgot Shark Tale existed. But why the fuck did that get an Oscar nod? That was a travesty. Wasn't that like a riff on Finding Nemo? Kinda. That was at the time when they were just making films that were sort of like Disney films on the surface, but really weren't mm. because people would buy them. And I'm so glad that they kind of stopped doing that. Or at least as a major feature sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You can still find knockoffs, but... What one thing is? That one, uh, The Incredibles one, which is not not but... surprising, because that was probably the best film that year for animation. Mm -hmm. uh, the year before that, we have Brother Bear, The Trippets of Belleville, and Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo takes the Oscar. And that's actually a pretty standard story. Like, that's not a story that hasn't been written before. Who is yeah, it? But... <laughs> Excuse me. Ugh. But it... Again, it's a how you tell it. And it did a good job at telling it. And it was also a nice technical from a 3D animation standpoint. Mm. And it was well acted. I mean... The Triplets of Beldeville is almost the same fucking story, only with people... And it, I think, was far more compelling, but it's also not a film that, like, the entire family would understand, so. Mm, that's like, uh, that's like showing somebody something from this Tashi Kong, uh, line of films. Like, uh, yeah. Tokyo Godfathers is a great, is a great movie, but it is not, like, it is not, uh, like, general audience material. Like, it's... Yeah. There's a lot of... It is certainly one of the easier ones to follow. Oh, yeah. yeah. General audience for American awards or from an animation standpoint because we still see it as a family thing because we're idiots. And I think, even though I think more people tend to die in kids' films. So in 2000... Just off screen. <laughs> oh, boy. In 2002, we had Ice Age, Lilo and Stitch, Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron, Treasure Planet, and Spirited Away. And I was actually kind of, like, Spirited Away was a great film, but I was kind of hoping Lilo and Stitch would take it, because that was a great film. That's, one of the, that's the film that you either love it or you fucking hate it. And I love it, but my husband does not like it. Well, there's a big, there's a big thing about, like, what is family... Yeah. What it means to be a family. Like, it had a great message, and I, yeah. because Disney, again, as we said, has gotten into the meh, so that everything kind of looks the same from an an their major feature standpoints, and Lilo and Stitch distinctly looks only like Lilo and Stitch, so. Mm hmm Well, and how many, how many, you know, minority main characters do you really get? Yeah. That, that that is a movie about non-white people. Yeah. With and literally with only white people as a background. Yeah. Because all the major players are either non-human or, or minorities. Yeah. Literally are minorities. Yeah. Maybe not for Hawaii, yeah, the, but I mean. Yeah, 
for for the American viewing populace. Yeah. Where we, us white folk, are normally shown as the main focus of almost any film. Even if the film was intended to be about other things, we are the main character who is suddenly super good at all the things the minorities were good at because we're saving them because white guilt. Fucking dances with wolves and bullshit. Anyway. Um, I mean, at least we have some really great animated television. We have a lot of shit, too, but... We're getting more decent animation, and then, like, as soon as stuff becomes we're... a big cash cow, they they kill everybody who was involved that made it interesting and just yeah. make it a big marketing... I mean, that was the whole thing. Some shows have managed to survive that, or they just had really good contracts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you gotta make sure you have the good contract, but it it's... It, Animation is sadly a social, uh, another social issue. It's how we perceive animation. We see it, unless it's a foreign film because it's from another country, it's somehow allowed to be otherwise. As a kiddie thing, it's it's for families, and it doesn't have. To it's be. not even that anymore. Like they're going mm -hmm. back, they're going back to what they did in the eighties and nineties, where it's just it's just a marketing engine. Let me sell mm -hmm. you toys. Who gives a shit about the context? You need to buy these toys. These toys are important. You should buy these toys. You can't live without these toys. Like the the new series, the new series of My Little Pony was really good initially, and then they fired all of the original creative staff so they could sell more toys. Because the original Which... creative staff was like, you know, we need to we can sell toys, but we need to give it you know, story. And they were just like, no, we need to sell more toys. We're not giving you this budget to make a story. We're giving you this budget to sell us toys. You're an advertisement. It is terrible. Like, I, like I don't mind merchandise being made off the of shit, but that should never be the main, main fork focus. You need to make money off your product, yes. That's how you can make more product. But... You should remember that your product needs to be enjoyed, not just, you know, glared at. Well, and then they also had the whole deal where they didn't want to, they didn't want, they didn't want the bronies watching it, so they, like, very quickly removed anything that would be interesting to anyone who is not, like, the average eight-year-old girl. Yeah, that reminds me of Young Justice. Oh, you mean our target audience isn't watching it, even though the show is very popular? It's not the uh, the audience we wanted? Oh, fuck that. Cancel the show. Mm-hmm. Because they wanted a male audience. Ignoring the fact that it, it was a very popular and financially successful show, it just wasn't with the market they wanted. Mm-hmm. Because apparently people don't think girls buy shit, even though we clearly do, because you market a lot of shit for us. Well, it's like Legos for girls. It's like, why not just yeah. buy Legos? What? Yeah. Why are you genderfying Legos? Just offer, Like, you know... girls and boys tents. Girls tents are, oh are pink. Boys tents are green. Why don't you just offer an array of colors? And like, why don't you just offer tent? tents? Who gives a shit? It's a goddamn tent. Yeah. Just, you know, useless gendering of products. But, yeah, I mean, like... Yeah. Well, what's really sad is sometimes you'll get, like, a, you'll get a really original product, and then it'll just be mass merchandise to death. Mm -hmm. I.e., the first year they had this category in 2001, Shrek won. The original Shrek was beautiful. Like, it's well-trodden, but it was a well-put-together movie. And they mm -hmm. just beat it into the ground. Yeah. They kept making it and making it, and it was essentially the same fucking story over and over again. Shrek is a dick. Oh, Shrek learns not to be a dick. But apparently he forgot, so we didn't have another movie where he's a dick and then learns not to be a dick. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Which, a lot of kids' movies seem to have that issue. The characters learn something, and then they need to make another one, and the characters somehow unlearn it. Mm-hmm. It's 
Like, you couldn't think of another issue or a different way to present that issue and have some different altercation become, come from it. No, same issue. That was Just different names. That was what was really interesting about, like... I know it's, like, a terrible straight-to-video thing, but, like, the second Little Mermaid, where it was, like, a reverse deal where they're dealing with their daughter wanting to go into this... Yeah. It, that... God, I hate that movie. I, I've never <laughs> seen it, but, it, like, the premise seemed really interesting. It don't. It don't. It, it, it's very badly told. <laughs> very badly. It's one of those movies where the end of it, you're like, this could have all easily been avoided if people would just fucking talk to each other! Well, it, it was like, it's like they made two sequels to uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. Two I don't know sequels! Why, but... Yeah. There is no happy ending! At least, I mean, in their in the, their version, at least there is a happy ending, but apparently they're like, oh no, wait, we need to give him a girlfriend, and oh, the only reason she likes him is because she's blind. That's not horrible or anything. That's called Ben Grimm syndrome. Yeah. Because that's a well-trodden trope. Only a blind fucking woman could love this guy, no matter how terrible he looks on the outside. But well, we've already we've already proven that women don't go for ugly men. I mean, that's that's pretty well just burned right into right into social constructs. Even if you're ugly, you're just gonna be alone is. forever. Yeah, like um, there was a post going around about a a um social experiment they did with Tinder. And they had... Oh, God, uh, yes, I've seen it. The chick in the fat suit, but it also references the dude's side where he wore a fat suit, and the women were much kinder than him. Yeah. It's a mixture of we're socialized to be kinder, but at the same time, we don't need a rock-hard guy. We just need a nice guy. And we're willing to give you the benefit of the doubt up to a certain point. Well, that's the, the whole thing where he, like, he did, he said and did some douchey things to see if that would change their, the way they yeah. perceived him. The guys were terrible. They would just be like, yeah. "Oh, you're fat." Uh, some of them didn't mind. even fucking sit down. The black guy was hilarious. Yeah. Not because he's black, but just because he's like, I don't like being lied to, and he just walked away. I mean, I'll give him like, yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, but then there's the that one guy who said what he was going to the bathroom and like 15 just, minutes yeah, later he still had he's, no he's been gone for <laughs> half an hour. I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you have to have the date, but at least you know be a decent fucking human being. Well, it's like Man. the the black guy kind of had the had what you would expect for a response. It was just really rude, like. He could have phrased yeah. that in such a way as to say, you know, I was expecting something else, and let's be dead honest, I feel betrayed, so I'm just yeah. going to walk away. He was one of the few ones where I didn't appreciate the way he went about it, but I could understand where he was coming from, where everybody else was very... Two-faced. Like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> and, uh, but again, that's a socialization issue. For both parts, because women were taught to put up with a lot, and men are expect are taught to expect a certain thing. Mm-hmm. Well, like social and, constructs for relationships are just really weird to begin with. Like, you, were, mm -hmm. you were talking about a mutual friend who, like I say, I'm always shocked that she isn't in a relationship, and like she looks at them as being way too much trouble because men are just way too demanding. And that's kind of like yeah. right where you were coming from is like the the men like look at the women they're just like you're not you're not perfect fuck off I'm gone it's like yeah. wow and whereas us ladies there's a bit of different socialization going on there but we're we we're taught the mindset of fixing or molding or putting up with because you're not going to get anything else because being single is the worst thing ever mm -hmm. and because it's our society it's a perpetual cycle because intentional or not the next generation sees it and learns it mm -hmm. and keeps on going and going, going and, and going, going. Mm -hmm. 
And for a lot of women, sadly, it's either too late or and they're just stuck or they don't they realize later in life and then they're you know old and nobody wants an old lady unless they're creepy or a cougar society considers people who want cougars creepy mm. Mm, not around here that's big business I'm talking about a well I'm not saying that it not profitable, nor that it happens, just that it's considered new from a majority standpoint, not from a minor culture or minute culture, because we're all micro cultures existing in the majority of American culture. Mm -hmm. That's no, it's um, weird. Yeah, it's it's terrible. But it's our society, mm -hmm. and it can't change unless we make changes. I mean, you could argue that it's better than it used to be, but at the same time, it's also not. So, because a lot of the the old hat stuff still holds true. I mean, I mean, at least I got lucky that I'm white. Oh yeah. Or God forbid, like transgendered. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm very lucky that I am white and cisgendered and appearingly he heterosexual, even though I'm not. See, you're married, so that's an automatic, like, bonus card or yeah. whatever you want to call it. It just fucking erases my uh, sexuality, which I despise and undermines a lot of those people out there who don't want to be. But at, from a person who doesn't know me standpoint, they just see a white heterosexual woman out with her husband. Yeah. So, if I'm around him, at least, I usually don't have to deal with anything. Well, that's the whole thing. It's like, yeah. women... It's unfortunate that it has to work that way, but women with men take a lot less shit because... If there's, the there. if there's a man in the group, it's assumed that any shit given is going to be received with physical violence. Mm -hmm. Or there's also the social contract of if they're taken, because again, women are objects, if they're taken, then they're not always, but at least you should back off. Let me, let me put this into context. We did this, we used to do this all the time where... Um, bunch of girls would sit down at the bar, you know, get hit on for a while, and then I would walk over. And then it would all just stop. I made... These were all friends. No advances were made. Just the fact that I was now sitting at the table with them, all mm -hmm. advances just stopped right there. Because of the supposed bro code. Because you're a man means those ladies are off limits. Unless you're seemingly uh, gay. Which I've been told multiple times. Which I think is hilarious, but that's a whole different yeah. beast altogether. But yeah. Um, I apparently scream things. bear. Yeah. Stalky. Hairy. Hairy. Funny. Uh, not seemingly too caught up with masculinity tropes. Yeah, I can see it. Mm -hmm. No, I scream. I've been in the gay bars. I apparently just scream bear. Yeah, but there are plenty of horror stories out there about women trying to get a guy to back off. Oh, yeah. And how it, it won't stop until another man steps in, and that's terrible. That is terrible. Or yeah. until they can convince them that there is another man somewhere else. Can make like, up a make new up fiance. A, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that's not what I was getting at with the whole as soon as I appear on the scene, it all stops because mm -hmm. even if even if it's it's clear that I'm in no way involved, the fact that there's now another man within hearing range just changes the entire dynamic. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I need to be on some mild behavior lest another man hear me be a horrific person. Again, there's nothing wrong with hitting on someone. I mean, flirting is part of our society, we're social creatures, but mm -hmm. you need to understand that no fucking means no. 
and that a lot of women, because they're so afraid of being murdered, try to do it very politely or have to make up a different person so that you'll, you know, not cave their skull in for denying you. Kiki, don't you because understand? In this country, in this society, you have only one purpose. To be naked, pregnant, and making me a sandwich in the kitchen. <laughs> well, I had a really good sandwich for lunch today. That's by far, like, one of my favorite... My favorite go-to... Ooh, okay, never mind. Ooh. This has been out a little too long. Oh, ew. This is the yeah, get rid of that drink. Pacific Coconut Sobe Water. Ew, coconut. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I, I thought... No, no, look at the bottle, look at the bottle. I thought it was bottled water. Oh, I can see why, yeah. And then, like, I got it out and I saw that color and I was like, oh, <laughs> that's not bottled water. Um... Well, our water is so mineral heavy that I would have gone, oh, that water just hasn't settled yet. <laughs> that's us, too. Our water's hard as a rock. Yeah. That's, um... Uh, that's some yeah. stuff, yo. Yeah. Things. But society sucks, yo. But, no, I mean, like, social social constructs are weird. Like... That was, like, my whole thing. Like, Ray and I were talking about the party last weekend. I felt like it was just this complete bust. And he's like, dude, you were awesome. People could not stop talking about you the next morning. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I talked to people for, like, ten minutes and then disappeared. They're like, you had everyone's attention for an hour. Or, sorry, sorry, you said that was half an hour. Like, for half an hour, you were the center of attention. Everyone was just like, oh my god, who is this dude? I'm just like, are you people on? Well, no. I mean, everything is perception. Nothing is from a social standpoint and mm -hmm. a perception standpoint. Nothing is really solid. What you, what your experience is not theirs. And apparently they all enjoyed you being there, and you were just like, mm, what is? That's usually how it feels for me. I feel like I, these days when I go to like a party or something, I feel like I wasn't really a part of it, but apparently people want me to keep coming back, so I was like, yeah. okay. Well, he's like, he's like, can we have a party for your birthday? And I'm like, well, you can do whatever you want, but uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that. He's like, well, he's like, honestly, I it's just, it's an excuse to have a party, but he's like, damn, we got to have you around more often. <laughs> like, and, uh, we're apparently going out to a bar later this month for, for a friend's birthday. Oh, boy. So uh, I bet you're excited. Yeah, stock up on some ebooks, Dude, apparently, on my new antidepressant, I am a cheap fucking drunk. Oh, yeah. Like, usually I am like, it takes so much shit to get me drunk because of years of drinking, but I had like a glass of wine maybe. It was mixed with other shit, so probably even less. And I was like, holy fuck, I have not been this drunk in years. That's hilarious. <sighs> oh no. Except for the occasional night, like last night, I am also a sleeping champion on this new shit too. When my body's not being an utter douchebag. Isn't your body always an utter douchebag? Not the case. Normally it's just a douche. Not an utter douchebag. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. I don't like to drink at bars anyway, but... Mm, like, I... F I want to be more sociable these days, so... I'm gonna give it a shot. What was that noise? That was my stomach. Holy crap. It some, sounded like someone was dragging Tupperware across, across a tile floor. I'm sorry. <laughs> are you hungry or are you just processing? I just only ate once today because we were really busy at work. Dude, go consume food. We'll do it later. Oh, excuse me. 
oh, the other day we had um those Little Caesar bacon wrap pizza thingy. Oh, how are those? They ain't good. Ex except for the fact that it's it was twelve bucks. It was really tasty. Like the that that's because it's those deeper pizzas that they cut into like rec rectangles. Yeah. So like just one was enough for all four of us. Where usually we have to buy like three pizzas. So it was it was pretty good. Like good crust, good um the bacon was good. I was going to be I was a little worried it was going to be like that overly processed tasting bacon where it comes to them pre cooked and they just kind of heat it up. It probably is, but it it it's not the shitty tasting kind. So uh, yeah. They they have a version of that pizza without the bacon, and I think we might start just getting that when we get pizza because mm -hmm. that's only eight bucks. Yeah, and the that deep feeds, dish. Yeah, that feeds us a lot better than buying a bunch of pizzas. Well, you guys can hose on the price. Like here, you could. Well, yeah. Five bucks, you're done. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. Um. It was it was really good. I kind of missed it a bit. <laughs> like I was dipping mine into ranch and it was super tasty. You people in your ranch, ah. What? I hate ranch. Are you just having the wrong kind of ranch? No, I just hate ranch in general. Okay. I don't like sour it's cream to begin with. I don't like sour cream by itself. I like it with stuff, which is why I like ranch, or like sour cream and it's, blah 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 kind even, of chips. It's not even that it's ranch; it's that it's ranch and pizza, you weird fucker. <laughs> like I can handle ranch on chicken, but it's goddamn pizza. It was so tasty back when I used to work at that the pizza place. When I was up in Reading, we actually had a chicken ranch pizza. Yeah. Well, that's different because now you're replacing the tomato sauce with ranch. Well, you could get it with ranch or ranch and barbecue sauce. No. What? No. We, Those do yeah, not go together. Also, Those do not go together. You either get dude, ranch I love, pizza or you get a barbecue pizza. You do not get both. I don't dude, care. Almost everybody always ordered it with barbecue sauce, and it was super tasty that way. I love barbecue sauce on almost everything. Is it is is that a different stater kind of thing, or are you just like a weirdo? <laughs> well, we have we have we have uh, CBR pizzas, which are chicken, bacon, ranch pizzas. We also have barbecue mm. chicken pizzas, but never both at the same time. We usually mix up shit. I mean. As a Californian, I fucking despise anything with avocado in it, but if it has California in front of its name, apparently ha it must have avocado and or mango for some fucking reason. Which is another thing I despise. But yeah, barbecue sauce and ranch are delicious. No. No just, ranch. Just like mayo or... and ketchup. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, no. This is why you're fat. <laughs> I am not fat. This is why you're fat. Lack of mobility is why I was fat. Anytime my friends are like, oh, I did this thing, blah, 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 10 pounds of bacon, I'm like, this is why you're fat. <laughs> mm, 10 pounds of bacon. I don't think I could eat 10 pounds of bacon in one sitting. Like, I love bacon to death, but my stomach just cannot handle so much food at once anymore. <laughs> Pizza just sounds really good, but it's like now it's like way too late to get any. Oh yeah, that's right, because you're in a different time zone. Mm -hmm. You're two hours behind me. If I was where you were, I'd still be okay. You could order yourself some Little Caesars. Or just walk there. It's a walking distance from where I am. Um, also had some nice Chinese food the other day. Because that's always what you should go do after your physical therapy. Go to the Chinese buffet. <laughs> mm, I like that. Tomorrow. That sounds good. <laughs> I 
actually didn't need that much, and it's 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 actually pretty reasonably reasonably priced if you go during lunch. So mm. we've appeared, apparently gotten to the babbling part of the uh, show. What what pisses me off is there's like no one who's open like late in my town anymore. Everybody closes by like eleven. It's like you guys suck. Um, the only thing open past like eleven are a couple of different fast food drive throughs like Jack in the Box and Burger King. Yeah, they don't even stay open. Wow. Like, we, our, our McDonald's used to be 24 hours a day or at least till, like, 1 or 2 in the morning. And they were like, we're not doing any business. We're going to close at, like, 10. It's like, 10? Okay, 11. 11. Shut up. What I used to do is get McDonald's on the way home from my buddy's place. And then it was like, like, one day I stopped by and they were closed. And I'm like, what do you mean you're closed? Close at 11. It's like, what? So if I want, like, food after midnight, I have to drive, like, 30 minutes in the other direction to a McDonald's that's open 24-7. I suppose technically we could also go to a gas station. Well, I could do that as well, actually. But I don't know if our McDonald's is still 24 hours. I never go there, so... Oh! Oh! Oh what? Oh. Oh what? Uh, the other McDonald's in my town is 24 hours a day now. Oh. What? Hang on a second. Huh? What? Okay. So the new nice one is only open till midnight, but the one on the highway that goes out of town is actually open 24-7 again. That was the one I was talking well, about. That kind of makes sense. That one, dude, for a while, that one was, like, closing at 10. And I was like, why? Oh. What? And they said it was because of the construction that they just weren't getting enough business anymore to make it worthwhile. And they must have, I guess they must have decided to go back and stay open again. Weird. At least that's what this thing says. Open twenty drive through open twenty four hours a day. Serves breakfast four AM to to eleven AM. Hmm. Silly. So maybe that's something to think about. Our White Castle used to be twenty four seven and they decided that they weren't doing any business and they mm. Um well I don't know, I've never been to a White Castle. Yeah. I wish that Really, my only thing is I wish more places delivered, but I don't really get delivery anymore. I wish we had a Chinese place that delivered. I, I don't have a Chinese place that delivers, but most of the places I want to eat are within walking distance. So It's just a matter of if it's so late, then I have to go in the car because of drive through rules. But we don't really get a lot of fast food these days because, you know, money. <laughs> Um, but there's no wiener schnitzels by you, right? No, uh, that's only in the West yeah. Coast. Yeah, well, they're changing their menu. Well, so. they're trying to streamline it, line it, so they took off the two things that I fucking love there. So. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, they no longer serve their delicious fucking chicken, nor do they serve curly fries. What? Yeah, nor will they be serving mini corn dogs after a while, and they're also changing their lemonade, but it, it's it, it's a corporate level thing, even though ours is just a franchise. Yeah. It, it's not owned by corporate, but corporate still dictates the, the menu. Yeah. And from a majority standpoint, they're just keeping the most profitable things, even though the things they're getting rid of are more profitable in our area, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Apparently, our wiener schnitzel does mostly curly fries with chili, chicken, and the ice cream stuff. Well, the food looks good. Damn. Yeah. No, it it is good. Like, they're all beef dogs are great. I have still not 
ever fucking had their corn dogs, though, and I'm not a big fan of their fries, but it's still, like, really great ice cream, especially because there's a deal every day on a different kind of ice cream. Wow, Tasty Freeze. This is like, this is like what Dairy Queen is for us. Yeah. So well, apparently we might be getting a Dairy Queen in town. Uh, dude, Dairy Queens are everywhere around here, mostly because they started in this area of the country. I, th- I would have to go to Davis for one. There's one here in town, but it is downtown, which means basically no one in, no one who lives in Stillwater actually goes to it. Mm. That's kind of why our Sonic had to close down, because really only the people from the highway were going to it, and then not enough people. Because there's so many other fast food restaurants closer to the turnoff than it it was, it, it had to be shut down. <laughs> Which I was never a fan anyway, so whatever. They uh, they started building Sonics here. Do you know what a bad idea that is? I'm gonna assume it's a bad idea. Think about how cold it is here most of the time. Uh yeah, Sonic's big thing is their fucking drinks. Because I can tell you, their food, or at least our Sonic's food. Not that great. Especially for the price. Oh. I just meant the whole drive-in thing. That doesn't work in a state yeah. that's cold nine months out of the year. <laughs> like, in Albuquerque. Well, that didn't really work... That didn't really work in a state that it's mostly fucking hot. Because who wants to sit in their hot-ass car? Like, it worked great in Albuquerque. There was one, like, every yeah. couple miles. But that's about the best I can say for it. Um, what what I'm hoping we get is um, oh god they're talking about stuff that we wanted to see like restaurants we wanted to see in our town and there's nothing regional I give a shit about but um, I'm hoping I'm hoping we'll be one of the places that gets Dunkin Donuts oh we have a Dunkin no we don't there, we have a Dutch Brothers, not a Dunkin' Donuts. They're, no. they're moving back. They're moving back into the Twin Cities, and I kind of hope that we we get one. Well, we have like a big mix of franchises, and then a lot of only locally operated thing. And we have like five different donut places, but they're all like local, family owned. They're not part of any chains or anything. Well, I would even take that. I just want a donut place that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Dude, you can almost get a donut anywhere here. Well, we have, I mean, we have, you know, grocery store and gas station donuts, but, like, yeah. an actual donut joint would be amazing. They haven't had yeah. those in a long time. I can walk, I can, like, my crippled ass, there's three donut places that I could reasonably walk to. Dunkin' Donuts is now expanding in California. Funny. wonder if we're going to get one. Maybe it'll go where the old Sonic was. Well, it's like we're, we're hoping for anything. Like, we have an old KF... All right, so our KFC closed down and our Burger King closed down. And I don't really care about either, but I'm hoping we get something to replace them before too long because... I like having different restaurants in town, and we just, like, have shit for restaurants. I am still... Well, we're a highway turnoff, so, like, a lot of people stop here on their way into or out of, like, the bigger cities. So we have, a like, a wide variety of both big chain and local places to eat, but I'm still so pissed that we lost our Popeyes. I was hoping we'll get a Popeyes where the KFC was, but... I'm not holding my breath. Like, for the longest time, because of a contract McDonald's had with our city, we, we didn't have a Burger King. And then a Burger King finally showed up, and it did shittily, and then it turned into a Popeye's. And then a different Burger King opened at a different location that was much better for it. And then suddenly Popeye's disappeared and became Burger King again. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Damn it, I wanted a Popeye's. <laughs> This town doesn't need two Burger Kings. Oh, well. I never, like, our Burger King was always kind of gross. Um, 
I don't think I've ever been to a Perusburg, so I don't know. It probably just depends on who's running it for any kind of chain restaurant. We no longer have a Quiznos, which I was unaware of. Because I never go there. I think we have a Quiznos. Our Quiznos just, was disgusting. I just like Quiznos doesn't offer me anything that I can't get from any other sandwich joint. Yeah, I've even stopped going to Subway though. We just if we want a sandwich that bad and like like a big fancy sandwich, mm -hmm. we just go to Walmart. Yeah, that's where I'm at now too. We haven't because ever since the neighborhood market opened up the street, there's a lot of shit we just go there for. Well, it's like our issue was uh, there's a new Italian place in town, and I had pasta the first time, and this last time I had one of their sandwiches, and their sandwich was like a single slice of meat. Why the fuck do I want to pay off the ass for that? I was I was actually like legitimately shocked. Like after we left, I told my I told like. Uh, I was telling Ray about the shitty time I had at work on Monday and blah, blah, blah. And he's, uh, he was going to buy me dinner. And so we went over there and, like, I was like, I mean, it was the sandwich was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. But it was just like, wow, you know, you think they'd give you a little bit more meat for, for 10 bucks? Ew. 10 bucks? 10 bucks. Wow. It was supposed to be 16 inches long. It was maybe a foot, maybe. It just it just felt like a massive screw job. Like, no offense, like they they're a really nice restaurant, but you know, life in the big city. Other than that, you know, another day in paradise. <laughs> yeah, well, my my little town seems to still be trudging along. So huzzah, huzzah. Probably. Probably only because the highway goes through us, but still. <laughs> well, that and because we're the county head and we're surrounded by a bunch of even smaller towns that have to come to us for everything, so. Oh no! Well, this is farmland, so. Which is how you can accidentally catch a bunch of possums in your cat trap. Huzzah! <laughs> when you're trying to capture up all the cats so that, you know, they stop fucking each other and. You end up with more kittens. And it's like, nope, that's possum. That's another possum. God damn it, fucking possum! Still possum. Hey, <laughs> possum. Possum, 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 possum. Kitty! Possum, 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 possum. After a while, we just started grabbing cats with our hands. It was like, yep, you're going to this farm. And I mean an actual farm, not like a... You're telling that's where grandma or dead dog went, you know. We, yeah. When we were living in Yola, we gave all the cats that had accumulated around us to a farm because they needed mousers. Huzzah. Uh, from social issues to food. That's us. <laughs> Thank you once again for listening to the Super Happy Fun Jabatron Tea Party Podcast with Kiki and Bones. It is often said that before you die your life passes before your eyes. It is in fact true. It's called living. Au revoir. Okay, so, uh, good night, Bones. Good night, Kiki. Mm, farewell, internet people.